Joe Depa here from the FTTH Connect Show in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm with Eduardo Hedruch, who is our network architect in Cala. Eduardo, nice seeing you again. Good to see you. By the way, um, Eduardo was just named the new chapter president for FTTH in Latin America, and I want to personally congratulate you on that. Thank you so much. Eduardo gave a, uh, was on a panel discussion today about uh, worldwide trends in fiber optics and um, Eduardo tell me a little bit some of the areas of growth that you're seeing in Latin America when it comes to fiber. I would say that uh, in our region both uh, telecom operators and KTB operators are experiencing good rate of growth in terms of home connected and, and home based and I would say that this is uh, mostly driven by the necessity to deploy uh, and offer new uh, services and, and, and not just higher bandwidth but also more uh, uh, reliable and um, stable and, uh, and low latency uh, bandwidth. So um, in terms of, uh, I would say that there's, there's a slightly different momentum in terms of the technology uh, in the difference in, the, in, in, both, in both kind of op or profile of operator. Um, we have uh, the telecoms operator that has started to deploy FTTH network much earlier than, than, in, than the MSOs operator. Uh, and this is because uh, the obsolescence of the copper technology has been perceived before than in HFC mm -hmm. network. So today we have, um, or we find the telecom operators more focused on, you know, connect customers, connect subscribers to the network uh, to increase the market share, to, to uh, avoid and control uh, churn rates. And in the other hand, we have um, uh, the MSOs um, starting to deploy FTTH um, in those areas that the, the, the technology is obsolete and uh, where they have uh, greenfield areas. Uh, we, they, they are in that, that way. One interesting trend that uh, we are seeing in, in the MSOs market is uh, even though the uh, DOCSIS technology, the DOCSIS 3.1 protocol is already available, is released, they realized that uh, the complexity, about the complexity that uh, made the upgrade from 3.0 to 3.1 has, um, and then the, I would say that they realized that the the pond network, the passive optical network, makes more sense in terms of capex, opex, and, and future-proof uh, technology. So uh, it's, a, it's an interesting trend uh, w w where we find MSOs going to FTTA, which is something new for, for, for our region. What are, you, what are you attributing that growth? Is it is it because of OTT? Is it increase in cable op subscribers? Why is that? Uh, definitely both. I would say that um, tele we have we have telecom operators uh, entering the pay TV business, you know, um, from a while, and uh, we have OTTs already finding the marketplace for for um, uh, MSOs, and, the uh, and in the end, and combining all this and, and, and related with all this, we have a generational trend that is millennials, you know, being more and more rela uh, relevant in the in the consumers in the consumer marketplace. So it's it's, a, it's an interesting trend and a combination of, of everything. Even with this group, are you are you still seeing obstacles? Um, you know that, that the service providers, the MSOs, what are they running into that might delay them from deploying any additional fiber in their networks? Um, it's, it's a good question. Well, as you know, in, in a, we we have a region you now with a lot of uh, economical, financial, political, and, and regulatory. You know, uh, from the economic and financial perspective, um, all related to. Um, devaluation, inflation impacts directly on the willingness of investment of the, of the operators, in mostly in, 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 in telecommunications infrastructure. On the other hand, we have regulatory issues uh, that is um, related with uh, uh, right of use and the, the service allowance and everything. So it's an it's a, it's a interesting but complex situation, um, and the customers, our customers, are, are addressing that kind of problems. Eduardo, even with these um, obstacles, there are, have been some, some great success stories in Latin America, especially in, in Uruguay. Can you tell me a little bit about this project? Yeah, of course. Uh, Until Uruguay is an uh, unstated company. Uh, that is uh, the incumbent in Uruguay. They had the same percent of the of the market in fixed telephony. They have the same percent of the market in, in FTTH. Uh, they started um, like four, five, five to six years ago with the, with the project. Uh, they announced uh, the investment in 2010, more or less. 
Um, well, uh, today they count around roughly around 1.4 million in, 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 in Compays, which is an incredible number for the size of the country. Uh, they count around uh, 500,000 in terms of uh, um, the home connected, which is a, it's a very good number. Uh, in the end, the connect rate is, is uh, 45, 46 percent, which is very above the 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 the. The average of region that is 18.1 percent, which is a very good number. They are in the top five worldwide uh, ranking in terms of uh, of uh, penetration rate. So they are around 40 percent of uh, of uh, of the households in the country has a network coverage. So it's an incredible, it's an incredible situation. And for us uh, as Comscov and as uh, SVT Council, it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting case to, to show to the to the industry. And with, with that success story, how is Comscope uh, situated in the market to, provi to provide that network and fiber infrastructure to other service providers in Latin America? Well, as I said, in our region we have a lot of challenges, you know, as I said, we have um, the economical, we have the, 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 the regulatory uh, challenges, but besides that, our, our customers, our operators in the region, uh, demand for solutions that allows them and helps them to um, I would say that to dry, uh, uh, to defer capex, to lower capex, to minimize the the the, the, the time to deployment, to minimize the, the opex, to minimize the the, uh, the all all the situations that are related to the to the to the skills that uh, required to to deploy and maintain the network. So Comscope, as trusted advisor, uh, provide both the consultative approach and cost-effective solutions to address this kind of, of challenge that our customer has. Eduardo, thanks a lot. Thanks for taking a couple minutes of your time. Okay, thank you so much.